Welcome back to the ABL Review for the American Battle League Season 21 South Division Week 3. Um, so, we've got the full slate of matches here. Uh, so, full disclosure, I'm recording this on Tuesday. So, don't have ad drops at the time of recording, but just trying to, you know... I, you know what, I keep trying to, there's a make hay phrase that I just, I have refused to learn apparently, but I keep wanting to say it and then I don't. But whatever that saying is, that's what I'm doing. So, let's hop in. We got some, we got some short matches here in this house, so it should be pretty quick to knock out here. Um, replays, there we go. So, um, we got Zhang taking on Connor here. Uh, Connor, after a stunning showing last week with Dusclops, brings Dusclops again. Let's see what sort of trouble he can get into. Um, and you know what? He gets into trouble right off the bat. We finally see Spide Ops, and we see the tail glow go up. Toxic Spikes come out. Um, so, Toxic Spikes here, I don't think is a bad thing, because you can get the Rillaboom, assuming it's not Boots. Comfy, you definitely want to get that. Toxic, that's not bad. Great Tusk is, you know... I think it makes sense to try to get it toxic, especially since you have spin blockers. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, so I don't hate the toxic spike play coming out. But now you've seen Volbeat go ahead and go for Tail Glow. There is some concern, okay? There should be some concern. And then we see the Encore locks him in the toxic spikes. Now he could have been going for toxic spikes again. He could have been going for a circle throw or something, which Spide Ops does get. Um, those would have been, you know, impactful. Uh, so, going for the Encore there, it's a little of this, a little of that, but now Toxic Spikes only stacks up to two layers. There's no additional benefits beyond that. It's not like regular Spikes. So, because one Toxic Spike gets you regular Poison. Uh, two Toxic Spikes gets you Toxic Poison. I can see benefits to either in this matchup, so I'm not gonna, you know, put too much on Connor for staying in there, because he might have just wanted to go to Toxic Spikes again. But now he kinda has to leave, because in our league we allow baton passing stats. I mean, we allow baton pass, period. So we also allow baton passing stats. This could go into one of his special attackers and it could get out of hand pretty quickly. Um, so I think Connor probably has to act fast and get into something that can't be KO'd easily. Unfortunately for his team, I think really the only thing that can't be KO'd easily is Dusclops. Um, so that, that could be a problem. But the Baton Pass goes up and Spite Ops actually stays in and goes for another Toxic Spikes. Now he should be pretty scared. Now he definitely has to leave. He's wasted turn three. He's he's behind the eight ball. Um, he definitely needs to switch spite ops out. Okay, interesting. He stayed in again and allowed this thing to get up in agility. At this point, fast thing on the field is Iron Crown. Um, the only priority that he that Connor potentially has is Shadow Sneak from Dusclops, which I don't think is going to get the job done this week. Um, Ice Shard potentially from Baxcalibur, which is resisted. Um, so, I mean, we're going to see Iron Crown's moveset here. At this point, uh, it's, it's too late. Uh, there's really no more counterplay that Connor has. The only thing he could do is, like here, if he doubled to Gengar and got a Cursed Body, so that way this thing couldn't go for, uh, like, Stored Power again. I think that's really the only way. Um, this is just a set he was not prepared for. And he didn't have any counterplay to it, especially once he gave it two free turns. Um, there was, I think there was little counterplay, honestly, that he had to it at all. It was a good game plan by Zhang. Um, and just very fast, very easy win for Zhang here. Uh, well done by Zhang. Unfortunate from Connor, because I don't think... Like, on his team, I don't think there was anything else that he could have brought. Let's let's real quick go over to the south and look at the, the draft page. Um, yeah, like, uh, Spadef Gliscor might have lived, but also it was Air Balloon, so it wouldn't have KO'd. You would have probably had to go AV Volcanion, but also you had to not let it get up the agility, so that way it couldn't be as boosted. 
Um, if Dusclops became a dark type and got off a of Poltergeist into a Shadow Snake, maybe you have something going there. But this wasn't the week for it. This is um, this is a this is a tough loss for for Connor. But I'm sure he'll be okay. Uh, big win for Zeng. Two Pokemon, six O, six KOs, all for Iron Crown. That's we're probably gonna see it in an MVP discussion at the end of the season just for this game alone. That's just how it tends to go. Um, shorter seasons are gonna do that. So after that, we've gone got Mike taking on Papcoon. Um, so yeah, I mean we'll, we got some thoughts. We'll get into this game. So early Terra here by Mike to give me the opportunity to get up the Stealth Rocks. Uh, not great opportunities to defog on Pap's side of the field, so we'll see how that goes. Papcoon does have like the premier Sylveon check in uh, Corviknight. Not going to take any damage from that. Belly Bolt's going to come out. I think this is a premature uh, attempt to set up from, from Papcoon here. He'd have to get up so many iron defenses before he could really do anything. Um, I think a potential double switch here or just a straight-up body press to get some chip damage would have been a better way to go. Because um, you'd have to have so many iron defenses up to break through this belly bolt. I just don't think it's the... Uh, I don't think that's the way to go here. But we can continue on. Then we got uh, Sui and Decidueye coming out here on the volt switch. Um, Sneasler coming out here. And that could have maybe been a defog opportunity from Sui and Decidueye, but... The Volt switching U-turning that uh, is going on here for Mike isn't really going to give him an opportunity to do so. Um, yeah, like, same thing here. He ended up just getting caught right there. He, like, he could have gone back to Corviknight, but it would have been, like, I don't know. It's 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 tough. He's He, he didn't want to get caught in the Vortex, especially with Rocks, especially because you see this isn't Heavy Duty Boots Cloister. The Belly Bolt comes out. Now, here, now here's, here's one thing I want to call out. Um, actually, let me take the t take a look at the teams real quick. Uh, sorry if this isn't this is likely not framed up good, but it's just a little glance. Um, we're looking at Mike's team. Okay, so with no Slow King around and no Bear Tick, like those are the only things that might have dissuaded a Shell Smash Cloister, but those things aren't here. If Cloister gets off a, sh a Shell Smash and has um, like drill run potentially, or also like just a little bit of damage on Belly Bolt. Um, Cloister can absolutely sweep with Ice Cold Spear from this point. Drill run, drill run, Ice Cold Spear um, could definitely get through this whole team after one shell smash. So I really think he needed to look for an opportunity to do that. I think Ice Shard was a really conservative play, considering also he couldn't get KO'd from full by Landorus T here. Um, like there's like Closer is so physically defensive. Um, there's just no way it was getting KO'd. But he's gonna switch out again. He really needs to find an opportunity to get rid of these hazards. Um, but he tries to avoid getting caught in, up in the vortex too much there and goes for a U-turn. So now we have this minus one attack Roaring Moon uh, with, the with the booster energy speed there, but um, he's, he's kind of fallen behind here. See the fly go. Uh, I'm really not super keen on the fly. I think it's overall not a great move um, because for a couple of reasons. A, it telegraphs to your opponent what you're going to have to do next. I think it also has a miss chance. Especially if you're going to be um, booster energy. Like, just run acrobatics. I know it's kind of a played out thing, but it is 20 base power stronger. It's only one turn. It can't miss. I just, I don't, there's no downside to doing it over fly. Like, if, he, if this was like... If this was like Taunt Roost with Leftovers or something, I could see Fly just so that way you can like... Um, and also if you had Toxic Spikes get uh, set up for you, I could see it working. Because it's there's an old um, like Defensive Salamence set that used to do that. I think that makes sense. But I just, I don't like it here. Uh, and you see actually the Colossal is able to come out. And despite this being 
a you know a fly from pretty from a relatively strong Pokemon since it's minus one and this is just like Colossal's very defensive. A super effective hit is only doing 21%. Also, this is Flame Body Colossal. He could have he he could have been in, put himself in a rough spot. I think he is in a rough spot right now. Um, just with the rocks being up, he hasn't been able to clear him. In the switch initiative on Mike's team, Typhoon's really fallen behind quickly here. Um, we do see the Rocky Helmet come out there. I still think that Mike, uh, sorry, Papcoon has an opportunity with, uh, because like Belly Bolt's now at 85%. He just needs a little bit more chip on that, and I really do think Cloyster is going to be able to kind of open up a can of whoop ass. Oh, he did get the Defog off with Corviknight, but those rocks went right back up. Uh, Corviknight's going to come out, and it's going to go down to this Power Whip here. Um, I don't remember what he tries to. Yeah, he brings out Roaring Moon. He's gonna try to go for that fly. Oh no, he, he roosts. See, but like acrobatics would have at that point probably done like 40%, if not a little bit more. Uh, you could probably could have just acroed twice there on the turn that you went for fly and gotten the KO. Um, another fly, and this is also Static Belly Bolt. Doesn't get the uh, doesn't get the Static Para. Like it's. You know, I, I don't know. I, I think Papcoon is just in a bad spot. I still think he has, but like I said, I, I really think Shell Smash Cloyster could bring it back for him. Um, cause, oh, I, you know what? This is another thing I need to call out. Terra Normal is not very common. I would say the most common Pokemon you see Terra Normal on is Pokemon that are already normal type, Pokemon that have Boom Burst, or uh, like Guts Facade Pokemon. I cannot wrap my head around why Decidueye is Terra Normal, other than just to have different weaknesses than what it would have otherwise. I like you're not no, you're not typically weak to Ghost, so it's not like you're avoiding it with that. Even if you were, you can't. Uh, I I don't know. I just because you you can already hit Ghosts with your with your fighting move. I feel like it's. And you're not weak to it. I just, I don't get it. Because um, you also, you're not getting to resist to any of the stuff that you would normally worry about. This is also, uh, we see triple arrows come out here, uh, which signifies, again, he doesn't even have a normal move, so I don't get the Terra normal. Um, also, triple arrows, when it came out, I'm like, man, what a, what a broke move. It's got a crit chance, a flinch chance, and a chance to drop defense. I feel like I've never seen those happen. Finally see a flinch out of triple arrows. Um, yeah, and he's gonna go down to the Earthquake here. If he was still, like, he didn't gain any benefit from being a normal type. I guess he did take that Flamethrower less bad. Um, but he also could have resisted that Earthquake. Uh, it's, it's tough. Yeah, so we see the Ice Shard come out here, not able to get the KO, but also Smackdown wasn't able to KO this, so if he had, if this Cloyster had Shell Smash and clicked it, then... Barring a, um, like a banded Sneasler's fake out, I think everything on this team is currently low enough where a plus two Cloister could have just icicle speared through and gotten the win. As Belly Bolt comes out, you see it's doing, um, that one doesn't count because it's a crit. It did seven, so that means it would have done 14 on a mi at minimum, right? So 14 times five, is 70 okay i guess it wouldn't have ko'd belly bolt but you just needed a little bit more chip i think there were there were win cons for you and he got two crits out of that too um yeah do two crits at if he if he got all the if he got the crits at the uh if he's boosted he can actually do it um yeah i comes away with a loss there i just think he needed to identify his win cons better um but also he just really got wrapped up in the vortex here rocks were up he couldn't keep him off the field so much switch initiative with Volt Switch, U-turn, uh, U-turn. Um, it's just it was a it was a tough matchup for him. But Mike comes away with a big win there. Good for him, and we can move on to our next game. For our next game, we've got Mitch versus uh, Tyler, and this is a weird one. Okay, so we got Fake Out, Hard Switch into, um, or not sorry, Fake Out, Eject Button into Torn T. So we know that this isn't Scarf Metacham. And because you wouldn't be Scarf Fake Out. That doesn't make any sense. And you Terra Ice and go for Ice Punch and you outspeed? 
I like max speed medicham. You know what? We we don't we don't do this a lot, but let's uh let's pull up the calc. Let me get this set up here. Um, let's see how should this look? No, no, that's fine. We'll we'll do this. So we got tornadus. Uh, this is the T one. Oh, you can't do torn T, huh? Torn T pivot versus Medicham and you wall breaker. Um, I don't think we saw an item from him, so we're just gonna ignore that. Uh, but Jolly, max speed. Hit 284. To be slower than 284, you have to... Do you have to run, like, down speed? No, okay, you just have to be zero speed. Zero speed torn is not a thing I've ever seen. Um, I don't... I don't think that's a good set. Um, clearly didn't work out here. Uh, cause you gone got Ice Punch KO'd against a Pokemon that you definitely just should have been able to outspeed. So, uh, not a fan there, but we can continue. Uh, Heatran's gonna come out, easy time to force it out. Uh, scouting for a high jump kick, I think that's a smart play. Um, Metachain's gonna come out on a Tailwind here, then Headbutt just trying to chip it away. Uh, Heatran's a good check, because also, I do think that this Heatran, now that it protected, it... Like, there's a chance Mitch thinks maybe he doesn't have a fighting move. Maybe he's Ice Punch, then Headbutt, take out and, like, Thunder Punch or something. I don't know. Um, there's a chance he might think he doesn't have a move. So, it uh, reveals that this is, um, Water Absorbed Clod Sire. That's good information to have. We've got the Grass versus the Water type come out. Energy Ball comes out. Actually, so this is bad luck for Tyler, because the Spadef drop means... That uh, Whimsicott, which is three, seven, five, three. so uh, it's naturally about the same speed as Tornadus. Um, Energy Ball is going to now be able to pick up the KO on Metachamp because it'll be faster, right? Uh, no, no, because we see the fake out, a little bit of chip, and he outspeeds the Whimsicott again. This is this is crazy to me that you have two Pokemon that are over 120 base speed. I think Wimscott. Well, Wimscott's least. Oh no, that's the next match. Um, you have two Pokemon that are over 120 base speed, and they both get outsped by a Metachain, which is 80 base speed. It's it's not good. Um, it, it like we know it's because we see it switch moves. It's not choice. This isn't like a weird like gets caught off guard by a choice move thing. This is you ran your Pokemon too slow. Um, it would have picked up a KO here with Energy Ball. Um, Torn might have been able to pick up a KO with, um, what's the, what's the thing that it has? Uh, Heat Wave. Like, Metacham's not bulky by any means. Uh, so that's, it's just real disappointing to see that happen. Claude Sire comes out, which I also think is weird, because we know it can't Terra, and we've seen both Zen Headbutt and Ice Punch from this thing, and boom, goes down. Uh... Metacham's in a great position. Heatran, I totally get here because you might really be thinking that this doesn't have a fighting move. Uh, but do a big chunk of damage. Lava Plume is able to KO it. I, I would say at least in part to the uh, reduced uh, Spadef. Because it might have been able to hang on if it wasn't. Um, hard to be certain about that. Uh, but now the Metacham's finally down. We're going to check and see what this Raikou has. It has Scald. Go hard, yeah, you go hard Gudra here. Um, unfortunate burn, but I don't remember if it comes to play. I don't remember if this Gudra has physical moves. Uh, going for the flamethrower, not really a good like move all around here. I feel like knockoff would have been better. Oh, okay. I want another classic Jeremy rant about an item. Expert Belt, and I don't want to rant against, against Expert Belt, because I don't think it's a bad item. It used to be one of my favorite items, but... I find it to be less impactful than I once thought it was, and I'll tell you why. Um, Expert Belt, you only get the boost if you hit with a super effective move. Now, I would say typically, you're, the moves you're hitting, you're, you're hitting with super effective moves, the times you're doing that are typically late in the game when you kind of have stuff wrapped up, because if your opponent knows what they're doing, you're not really hitting with super effective moves all that often because they're probably switching into something to check. So like Swampert's would, Swampert would be 
if it was using one of its stab moves, you know, water move or earthquake, it's going to be hit on the switch in, which is Whimsicott. Or it might get hit on the Tornadus, which those aren't super effective. They're resisted. So you're actually not getting any benefit from your item. I find typically when I want to give my Pokemon a little boost, don't typically go Life Orb, but I'll go one of the type boosting items like Stick Water, Miracle Seed, Charcoal, um, or I don't think the plates are in the game, like the Arceus plates, that's what people used to use. Um, because I find, though, it tends to be if a Pokemon's just going to be, like, clicking a bunch of moves, it's you, you want it because their stabs are good. That way, even if they're resisted, it's still, like, their strongest possible move, and you're giving a little, a 20% boost to that. So even if it's a resisted move, you're still getting a 20% boost. I find that the boost from Expert Belt is not typically super beneficial, because it's hard because i think you want one of those like rainbow move sets to really take advantage of it where ever all four moves you have are attacking moves and they're a different type and then you also kind of have to make sure that the calc is justified because leftovers and heavy duty boots are such good items that you might just want those instead or if you're going to be using your stab moves 80 percent of the time anyways you might just want to boost on those I just feel like it is a more niche item than some people think. Um, some people will just toss on like, I feel like it's in that group of the salt vest where sometimes people just toss it on because it's not a bad item and you're gonna maybe be getting a benefit. But if you can't really articulate what the benefit's gonna be, it's, I don't know, I, I just don't like it. Yeah, yeah that, but that's, uh, that's my rant for the day. Um, so we just got two burned Pokemon. Trading physical moves here. Draco Meter comes out, not quite able to get the KO on Swampert, but the Ice Punch is going to do a little chunk of damage. Hey, look, that would have been a slightly boosted move by Expert Belt. Um, so, you know, shut me up. But uh, then the Raikou comes out, goes for Scald, not really sure why. Um, I don't really know why the Raikou came out in general. Like, you had other options to be able to KO this. Like, getting the defense boost on Archaladon is helpful, but you kind of could have gone Raikou hard into Archaladon to pull the same thing off. Um, but Archaladon is going to be able to just kind of clean up here, just going to be able to get the stamina boosts. I don't really get this play here at the end by Mitch. Everything's said and done, so I guess it doesn't really matter that you switch out. But um, yeah, Archaladon is going to be able to clean up with body presses there late game. Good job to Tyler getting back on, uh, on in his winning ways. Uh, that he, he had going last season. Let's see if he can keep it up. Um, and I think now we can move on to our final match, which is our marquee match of the week. Marquee match of the week. Now we have a theme. So hopping into our marquee match of the week here, we've got Darren taking on Michael. Um, so Michael's brought like a variation of his Trick Room stuff that he's been doing, uh, kind of a slow team here. Um, dual Intimidators, which I think is probably good for this matchup. And Darren's brought his just kind of general, like, kind of bulky balance. It's bulky offense, really, I guess. There's not really a lot of defensive Pokemon here, save for, like, arguably Rotom Wash and arguably Muck. But for the most part, I would say those are offense. This is kind of a bulky offense team, so we can jump into this. Do the Toxic Spikes go up early? Um, this is probably a time that you'd want to try to get Donphan in here soon to clear stuff out, especially because as we see later, don't have um, like many, if any, I don't remember if we have any heavy duty boosts on this team out of Michael. Uh, so Donphan being the only potential clearing option um, probably should be a priority for him. Uh, but we see, so and we do see him do that and just going to try to get the Donphan out here and go for the rapid spin. But uh, good play by Darren to kind of head that off and go hard into Dragapult so that way this Donphan can't spin. Um, and then we're going to see a double here so that way, yeah, scouts for the knockoff or the ice spinner and he sees it come out here. So that's good information to have. Another good play by Darren. Um, and so now we do see the rapid spin. Those toxic spikes are going to go away. Dodges the Hydro Pump. That could have been big there, because if he hits that, then the Spinner's gone for the rest of the game. Doesn't need to worry about it. Um, he can get those Tox Spikes up against later. Uh, against a lot of stuff later. Will-O-Wisp is going to come out. Good hard read there. Um, 
Like, he could, because if he got that wrong, then he stays in and he willow is something that's already burned. Unsuccessful. Good hard read by, uh, by Darren. Uh, we see the light screen come up. I railed against this last week. We've seen the leftovers knocked up, so we know he was never light clay. We see the light screen come out against a physical attacker that has stab to hit you. Like, he was, he, I, this was a. This is a throwaway Rotom moment here where he's just going to throw up a light screen against a physical attacker. If he goes for Seed Bomb or Bullet Seed, this guy's dead. And now you're bringing in something else to take it on that's not really going to benefit from the light screen. Don't like the play. I talked about it last week. But instead, he just goes to sleep. Now Muck's going to come out, try to get that Toxic Spike back up. Eats a high horsepower. Not great for him. Um, obviously, you don't want that. Uh, that's a lot of damage. Now he's going to go hard into an Amorous. Good, uh, you know, good call by him there. Uh, able to play around that. Um, maybe a little bit risky bringing in a flying type on a nice type, but I think it was the right play there because I don't think it would have been hard for Michael to justify going for an ice school crash on that turn. It's such a hard prediction. Um, and Rotom's also potentially a switch in, so it doesn't really get you too much anywhere. I think I, I but both plays are good. Um, Snowcrest is going to come out, eat a Moonblast. Honestly, pretty good chunk of damage there. Because of Levitate, not going to have to worry about the uh, the Toxic Spike. But um, Trick Room is going to go up. Crest is going to burn a turn of it, uh, getting healthy. As the uh, Great Tusk is going to come in. Clear Amulet. Clear. What is Clear Amulet for here? I guess Intimidate, maybe, on Hisuian Arcanine? That's, uh, what else could it be? Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't see a lot of benefit for the clear amulet. Uh, Mike, let me know what the what the game plan was there. I'd, I like seeing new items. That's always fun. But if it was just for intimidate, I don't know if that's a uh, a great use of your item slot because a uh, Hisuian Arcanine tends to just be. Oh no! Wait. Oh no! Hisuian. Yeah, that's for stuff like that. I don't know. That's an interesting one. Um, but I didn't notice that my, on my first watch through. But uh, he's going to go hard for the knockoff here, predicting the Dragapult to come in to block the spin. Um, but Darren stays in there and is just going to try to get a little bit more damage on this Great Tusk, try to wear it down. Now he's going to go Dragapult, anticipating the spin. Uh, good play by Michael, getting off good damage with the Earthquake. Um, absolutely right play there. It would have been hard. Like, I don't think it would have been a good play for him to go for knockoff again. Um, uh, he'll take the earthquake damage there. It would have KO'd Muck, um, because it seems like Muck didn't have anything to fully kill him. Um, and able to get the, uh, a good amount of damage on Dragapult here, because obviously spinning was kind of out of the question. That was also a good play by Darren to go there, because he only, he knew he only had to go one more turn. Um, as long as he didn't catch a knockoff there, but either way, Toxic Spikes are going to stay up, because he couldn't get him, like, you know, forced to potentially... Like, lose the Toxic Spike on that turn. It's, it has to stay up now. So, good play by Darren to keep it up. Um, the Amoongus is going to come back in. I think the Sucker Punch was kind of a conservative play at this stage in the game, just due to the fact that with the Toxic Spike being up, with your Amoongus being burned, um, I feel like you need to kind of start getting stuff in gear. Um, I think he probably should have just gone for Crunch on that turn. Because it would have been hard for the drag, drag, Dragapult, which hasn't showed anything, to KO the Amoongus at this point. I think Sucker Punch was a little bit of a conservative play that probably shouldn't have gone for. If you had Crunch. If you didn't have Crunch, then Sucker Punch is obviously your best play. Um, I love the prep here by the Muck going for uh, Pain Split there. Really smart move. Um, able to stay healthy and get this knockoff plus poison touch poison on the Cresselia. That's absolutely huge. Um, really reduces this Cresselia's longevity. Like, think about it. Without that knockoff, this Cresselia is gaining 6% per turn. But now, it's not gaining the 6% per turn. And it's losing 12% per turn. So it is a net loss of 18%. As opposed to if he didn't stay in, take that Psy Shock and get the knockoff off. Excellent trade there. Um, yeah, I, I like that a lot. So we do see the bullet seed come out. Um, 
hits four times. Maybe loaded dice, maybe some other item, hard to say for sure. Um, but we see the crest come in, it's gonna lose that 12%. Uh, it's got a moonlight up. Uh, pain split, which just gives uh, Muck a lot more health. Really paying dividends on that knockoff plus the poison. See another layer of toxic spikes go up. Now, if the Arcanine, Luxray, and um, Calyrex, not Calyrex, uh, the Glashrier are not boots, those are getting poisoned or toxic poisoned. That's really big. Um, I think that was that was definitely worth the turn because it seems like this Cresselia is not being super offensive. I think this is a risky play to bring in Hitmonchan here because I think that's a perfect opportunity for Crest to try to go for Psy Shock and get the KO on Muck. Uh, or not the KO, but like weaken the Muck. Um, so bringing in Hitmonchan here, I think it was a little bit risky, but it looks like it paid off. Um, now, unfortunately for Michael, this ice cold crash dodge that would have done like I easily over 50 percent. Um, and see these salt vests come off the uh, glass rear. Now we're gonna follow up with a high horsepower. Wants to go for a higher percentage chance to hit move and also dodge the fighting move incoming. A uh, good play there, but you would you see that this would have been a dead hit Monchan at that point. Um, would have been a big help, and plus this would have gotten the plus one boost. If all that happened and he still has a turn under Trick Room, probably would have been able to pick up a, another KO there. Uh, excellent call going for the Icicle Crash there. Would have picked up the KO on Hitmonchan and able to block this Enamorous from coming in. Awesome call by Michael. Um, but now it's too little too late. I like that he saved a glass share in the back as a sack. Um, but unfortunately there's just like, like... I like the idea of it, but I think it probably would have been better used... Because you didn't have, like, if you have a perfect switch into a Pokemon, I think it's good to save a sack in the back. You didn't have a perfect switch in. Glasher is literally on its last leg. It's only going to have one more turn in. You can't switch it in. You have to bring it in after something faints. So I think it would have been better used to just sack off right there, gain some switch initiative. Maybe you can find a better position here for yourself. But now we're just going to see... Um, the two Arcanines just kind of take on each other with extreme speeds. I'm guessing these are both banded. Oh no, wait, you see a Dragon Pulse come out? How did I miss that? That's so weird. Um, I don't I don't get the play behind that. I guess it's like Dragon Pulse makes sense as a switch into Arcanine, kind of, because otherwise it'd be going for Flare Blitz, Close Combat, Extreme Speed, so I guess I get it. Kind of an interesting call there. Um, but at this point, I feel like uh, Michael's just kind of lost too many... Um, pieces of the puzzle here uh, you know what i take back what i said you got a good sack to draco there um yeah see the sucker punch come out again drain punch um able with the terra fairy able to pick up that ko get really healthy um supercell slam coming out not a move i like but uh, a good move in this uh scenario um able to pick up the ko here and uh but darren's able to really safely safely clean up a really good game. I think both guys made good plays in this. Um, just all of Darren's were, I think, between his sets and his plays, just a little bit more polished, just a little bit more better. Uh, so well done to both of those guys. Um, and that's going to wrap up the games for this week. So next thing we're going to talk about is ad drops. And week three had a bounty of ad drops here in the south. Oh, that's annoying. Sorry, guys. Oh, no, not upgrade. I don't want to upgrade anything right now. There we go. Um, okay, so let's hop into it. I mean, we're going to have to head over. I'm probably going to have to reframe it. Yep. Um, it's sloppy work, but here, now you can see uh, this over here. So um, we've got Tex Arcana Toxics making some big changes. Five drops and five pickups. So dropping Roaring Moon, Sandy Shocks, Cloister, Cloth, and Fortress to pick up Crocodile, Cinderace, Miss Magius, Ambipom, um, so also something interesting came up here. Uh, I guess I'll get to it in the next one, but let's focus on this. So, um, speed's obviously a little bit higher. Uh, we have a little bit better hazard control with Cinderace. Oh, I spelled shocks wrong, but I don't, we're, we're just going to get over that, right? Everyone, everyone knows what I mean. Um, so we, yeah, we have a lot of good hazard control here. Roaring Moon obviously was like, not doing what he wanted it to. I'm a little bit worried about his kind of like lack of setup opportunities here. I think he had a, obviously a great one with like good ones with Cloyster, um, or like Cloyster, Roaring Moon, and even Cloth. 
but not as many good setup opportunities with this hero. I think bulk up Crocodile is, I don't know, kind of a challenge. He's got good immediate power though with Ambipom, Crook, and Cinderace. Uh, maybe that's going to be suiting his playstyle a little bit more, and hopefully it does, because that's all the changes he can make this season. Looking to turn stuff around. Uh, let's see if I can reframe this in a good way to get what I want. Bip, bip, bip. Uh, that looks pretty solid, right? Okay, well now we're going to head over to the Minnesota Typhlosion, where they drop Rillaboom and Comfy to pick up Ogre Pond, Hearth Flame, and Paldean Tauros. So... I don't really get the Paldean Tauros pick. Uh, already had a fighting type that I think fills the role just better. I don't see Paldean Tauros coming to a lot of battles personally. And losing your fairy type, I'm also not a big fan of. So I do struggle with that. And then also this team seems to be pretty built on um, terrain. Now, Still has the option for a psychic terrain. I think what I would have liked to see happen here. Hold on, let me let me check a thing real quick. Because how much does um, Indeedy with the horns? How much does that go for? Because yeah, Indeedy mail. So it's eleven points. Honestly, I think I would have liked to see Indeedy female get dropped for Indeedy male. Drop Paldean Taurus for another two pointer. I think that would have been better use of the points. Um. Oh, he has one point left over, too. Shit. Because um, originally, he wanted to pick up Cinderace, which costs... Okay, the same amount of points. Uh, also, this is not updated to reflect Terra's... Uh, I'm kind of recording these things out of order, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, so, I don't like the Paldean Tauros pick. I think he should upgrade upgraded DD Female if he was going to downgrade his terrain options. Because I think he's made good use of the Unburdened Sceptile and having Drift Bloom around, I think, also is a nice option. Um, although, having Rillaboom gone does free up Great Tusk's Earthquakes a little bit more. So, I, I like what he's got going on there. I'm just... I don't hate what he's done here. Um, I think Ogre Pond's a good pivot from... Uh, the Cinderace, but overall I do have some some issues with the construction of the team here. But uh, Zeng's done a bang up job of proving me wrong in the past. So we'll see where things go. Uh, next after that we've got Tyler and the Oakland Galators. Let's remind me what they did. They dropped Lycanroc Day and Glaceon to pick up Pile of Swine and Altaria. Um, wait, is that is that right? Yeah, yeah. So Glaceon being gone makes perfect sense, especially with Pile of Swine taking his place. Like, it's kind of become a meme in the league at this point, like, oh, Glaceon's an Ice Sharder. Uh, you have Pile of Swine, who's actually a very good Ice Sharder. Um, also, Glaceon's tough because you want it to, f like, it's statted out, I think, to function as, like, either a Wall Breaker, which has no coverage, or a defensive Pokemon, which has the worst defensive typing in the game, arguably. Um, but now you got Altaria, which gives you a Defogger, and it gives you a Dragon, which I guess he doesn't have, but Dragon is a good defensive type, and Al Altaria can make that happen, along with Defog, Roost, Will-O-Wisp, Haze. It's got a lot of really good utility, honestly. Um, and then we have Pile of Swine, which gives him another Rocker to replace Lycanroc. Uh, and he's honestly also still doing pretty good on the speed front, like you got Meowskarada and Raikou, uh, doing pretty well. Houndoom's not too far behind, I want to say that's in, like, the 95 range. Um, I think the speed tiers are still pretty solid for the Galators here. Overall, I think this is probably pretty good. Um, like, misses a little bit of priority in Lycanroc, but he's got Sucker Punch, Bullet Punch, Ice Shard. Uh, I think this is honestly a good change for him. Um, hopefully he can keep that momentum going. Got a lot of teams at, uh, two and one right now. Um, let's keep up that momentum and good luck to him. Uh, and after this, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break and review Terra's, and then we'll uh, pick right back up. So jumping back on here, I realized I don't really need to break down the Terra changes once I put them in. Um, if you're depending on the order you're listening to, this is a real memento situation. Everything's happening out of order here in terms of recording. Um, so I might I figure we'll just come back here. We'll take a look at the standings, and we'll go from there. Uh, Darren and Zane both off to 0-2 starts. Uh, obviously, they had their bye weeks early here, so that gives them a little bit of a cushion there. Haven't played quite as many games. Interestingly, um, 
2-0 start. Haven't played any of the same teams, so that's kind of an interesting thing there. Um, uh, Zeng, big win this week. Obviously catapults him up in Peru. Uh, but we have, uh, again, a pretty tight race in the south. Um, this line here, like, you know, three teams going to miss out on the playoffs. Do I have that right? That's what I wanted to do? Yeah, I guess it is. It's fine. Um, three teams going to miss out on playoffs there. Um, but we're also going to, you know, more chances to make it to the north because we're going to be doing a third place game also. Uh, yeah, but Dar Zeng, Connor, Tyler, uh, all really closely contested. Mike and Michael just right there on the edge. Um... I'm, I'm excited to see how this is going to play out. Let's take a look at the schedule for the upcoming week. So Mitch is going to be on a bye week. I think is he, he's winless right now, correct? He is. Um, so we got Darren versus Connor, two undefeated teams going on. It's really exciting. Uh, or no, never mind. Darren and Zane are the two undefeated teams. Whoops. Uh, Darren and Connor. Connor, I feel like, has made, actually had some really good performances uh, so I'm hoping that he does well in this game versus Darren, even though Darren's been kind of the powerhouse in the South, despite not being able to really get across the finish line when it comes to playoffs. Got to fix this if we have a six team thing, but it'll just be, look the same as the North. Um, Zane versus Mike. Uh, Mike needs a win. Zane really obviously wants to keep his winning ways going. Pap Coon and Michael. Kind of the same, kind of the opposite thing here. Papcoon really needs to pick up his first win of the season. Um, Michael wants to start stringing together some wins after struggling a little bit in the first three weeks here. Zeng versus Tyler. This is an exciting match. These two are two of the most unpredictable battlers in the ABL. That should hopefully be a fun one. Um, I don't think there's anything else too much to talk about. I think we're behind in stats, but you know we'll, th that'll be caught up at some point. Not too important. Um, but I just want to thank you all for listening to this, and we'll see you again next week. Goodbye.